Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this Friday, the 12th of January, 2024. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Offices team, the ministry that brings you morning prayer every weekday morning, exclusively on Zoom, if you're attending live, but also later on in the day, if you want to attend on one of our social media stations. So this morning, uh, we are going to commemorate Aelred of Riveau. Aelred was born uh, in 1109 in Durham, which is just, it's on the north east coast of England, just south of Newcastle. Uh, he was sent to the Scottish court for an education that would prepare him to be a noble and a courtier. Uh, but he decided that he would rather than serve an earthly king, serve a heavenly king. And so at the tender age of 24, he entered a Cistercian monastery at Riveau in Yorkshire, just uh, an hour north drive of York today. Uh, he was a contemporary of Bernard of Clairvaux, who encouraged him to write down his thoughts, uh, which resulted in his first work called The Mirror of Charity. And then his most famous work is called Spiritual Friendship, in which he, uh, in which he uh, speaks against the, uh, the uh, thinking at the time that Christians ought not to have any particular friends. And in, uh, in defending having particular friends, he points to Jesus' particular friendships with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, that household of Bethany. And so it's not a bad thing to have those for, with whom we are most comfortable. So a little bit of theology there. So why don't we get started on this Friday, January 12th, 2024. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. I neglected to welcome you this morning. Good morning, Joan. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Julie and Pete. Good morning, Wendy. And good morning, Tracy. Thank you for joining me this morning for the live broadcast of Morning Prayer. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 95, Venite Exaltamus Domino. We shall say the Venite together in unison. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving 
and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. We have a pair of psalms appointed for this morning. They are Psalms 16 and 17. We will say the psalms together in unison with a slight pause between them. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart. Summon me by night. Melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. I will call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assault me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed their heart to pity, and their mouth speaks proud things. They press me hard. Now they surround me, watching how they may cast me to the ground, like a lion greedy for its prey, and like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront them and bring them down, Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand, from those who, whose portion in life is this world, whose bellies you fill with your treasure, who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to their little ones. But at my vindication I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So today's first reading requires some context, because we have skipped the fifth chapter of Genesis incident in its entirety. Now, in fairness, 
The fifth chapter of Genesis gives the genealogy of humankind from Adam all the way to the birth of Noah. Now, uh, apropos to today's reading, the typical age of these first human patriarchs was about 900 years, the longest lifespan being that of Methuselah at 969 years, hence the expression as old as Methuselah. <laughs> In today's reading, the Lord decides to limit the lifespan of humans to what we would consider today a very old ripe age and uh, begins to, and the Lord also begins to have misgivings about having created humankind at all. Luckily, there is Noah and we get a foreshadowing that he will not follow through <clears throat> on his, uh, his idea of blotting us out from the face of the earth. So we're reading from the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter. When people began to multiply on the face of the ground and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that they were fair and they took wives for themselves of all that they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in mortals forever for they are flesh. Their days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God went into the daughters of humans and bore children to them. These were the heroes that were of old, warriors of renown. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we respond to our reading from Genesis with a song of praise, which we shall say together in unison. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. In today's second reading, we heard, hear the story of the wedding feast in Cana, uh, Jesus' first of several miracles in the gospel according to John which culminate with the raising of Lazarus, his greatest miracle. So this passage begins on the third day. So where does that come from? Well, on the first day, John the Baptist first identifies Jesus as Messiah to his disciples with the words, behold, the Lamb of God. And you recall that a couple of his disciples, including Andrew, follow after Jesus and ask where he lives. And later, Andrew brings his brother, Simon Peter, to Jesus. On the second day, Jesus had traveled to Galilee from the Jordan and called Philip his disciple, who brings to him Nathanael, the Israelite, you'll recall, in whom there is no guile, according to Jesus. So today's reading takes place the next day, the third day, hence the beginning of our reading. 
On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did, did this the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers and his disciples and they remain, remained there for a few days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond to our reading from the gospel according to John with a song to the Lamb, Dignus S, which we shall say together in unison. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth 
your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect of the day is the collect for the first Sunday after the Epiphany, the baptism of our Lord. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. And a colic to commemorate Aelred of Riveau, abbot, who died in the year 1167. Grant to your people, almighty God, a spirit of mutual affection, that, following the example of your servant, Aelred of Riveau, we may come to know the love of Christ in loving one another. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for this week, a prayer for protection. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants toward the attainment of everlasting salvation. That, among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Bujumbura in the, in the country of Burundi, the Right Reverend Arasta Bigimana Bishop, and the Diocese of Bukukava, Congo, the Right Reverend Silvestra Bahati Balasusani, Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and his wife Kate, and the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, Presiding Bishop and Primate. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, Remembering today especially, Sean, Howard, Martin, Paul, Allison, Rob, Carolyn, Phil, Mary Ella, Keith, Mary Jean, Grace, Catherine, Peter and Mirabel, Bunny, and Elise. We pray also for ministries of current activity, remembering especially Haiti food packing, that the children of Bon Samaritan School and the people of Bondo, Haiti, may be provided for both physically and spiritually. And our food pantry, that through nourishing the bodies and spirits of our neighbors in need, we may be a beacon of faith, hope, and love in this community. And now, if you wish to say it with me, our Good Shepherd Parish Prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd 
truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your own prayers a petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. I would like to begin our prayers this morning by praying for all those who are afflicted by the current spike in COVID and also other respiratory diseases, RSV and the regular flu, and of course the common cold are all circulating right now. Uh, pray for a recovery and uh, full recovery and health for all of those who, uh, who have those. So, Sanctify, O Lord, the sickness of your servants, that the sense of their weakness may add strength to their faith and seriousness to their repentance, and grant that they may live with you in everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us also pray for our healthcare professionals who keep us well even in our darkest moments. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and recovery and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit that by their ministries, the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And one last time I asked your prayers for our youth and their leaders, including myself, Miss Beth, and Father Derek, who will be going on a long weekend retreat. We depart from the church parking lot at 3.30 today, and uh, we return around one o'clock on Sunday. So this is a retreat to a, a rustic convention center uh, in uh, central Florida, and we are going to uh, be staying in cabins, uh, which are clustered around a fire pit so we can have a bonfire, all that good stuff that adolescents thrive in. So, and yes, and Joan seconds this, safety and spiritual awakening this weekend, spiritual awakening, hopefully not just for me, for the youth group and Ian and all adults. Well, thank you for that. So this is our prayer for young persons. God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And indeed, we had a lovely uh, youth group on Wednesday night. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, as the kids reconnected, there was a lot of excitement. You know, just it's been two weeks or more since we got together because of the holidays. So they had a great time. And thank you, Wendy. Wendy says she also will be praying for me and that it'll be a fun time of fellowship and spiritual growth for our youth. Yes, let us hope that that happens. Aha. So Julie asks our prayers for travelers and those in the path of the cold weather. Yes, we've been getting some really severe weather across the eastern United States and uh, we, we've gotten some high winds in Florida, but nothing compared to what they've been inundated with. Um, oh, thank you, especially Letty, who's flying to Knoxville today. By the way, Knox County schools are closed today because of high winds. It's amazing. Wind advisory just doesn't seem right, but they decided that 
to do it in prudence. So let us pray for all travelers. O God, our heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, in whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular Letty by plane to Knoxville today, and Ian, Beth, Derek, and the youth group in their driving up to uh, Lake Placid, Florida. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning for morning prayer here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church to Cuesta, Florida. May you have a blessed rest of your day and coming weekend. And uh, again, do pray for us as we go for our youth retreat. And of course, as you go out into the world today and greet your neighbor, be kind to him or her. One never knows what another is going through in this life. Amen. Oh,